So here is what we want to accomplish today. We have a coffee cup over here which is empty and we have a coffee pot over here which of course has coffee in it. And now I am going to pour some coffee into my coffee cup. And here we go. Here it is. And that's it. I am going to show you the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do the refillable cup mechanic in just a second. It is going to be a beginner tutorial, so if you have very little experience or no experience building in Horizon, you will do just fine. However, if you want to save yourself some time, you can download this interactive asset from the Metacrafters Asset Store, link in the video description below. Now let's go ahead and continue with the tutorial. I am in a brand new world and I am going to start by going into my the asset library and let's look for a coffee cup. We need a coffee cup and we also need a coffee pot. So let's go ahead and grab a coffee pot. I see one over here. That looks good. And we also need a cup. Well, this looks like a cup. Which one do we want to use? Let me grab this one. That looks good. So I have a coffee cup and a coffee cup uh, pot from the asset library. Okay, looks good. Let me move this guy out of the way. All right, so uh, now we need coffee to go inside of the coffee cup. And to do that, I am going to go to my uh, shapes and just look for a simple cylinder just a simple cylinder this is going to be the shape of coffee inside my coffee cup over here and let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger i basically want to create an illusion that this is going to be the coffee inside inside the cup kind of like this simple Simple does it make sure that it's not showing through the walls of the cup over here Just like this you probably want to change the color of it too because right now it looks more like milk than coffee so let's go ahead and uh, Pick a color this one will do and now it looks like we have some coffee it's showing through The wall over here, so make sure you resize it Looks good to me so far, so far, so good. Okay. So now, uh, the scripting that we need to do is we need to do something that will tell Horizon when we bring this coffee pot close to the cup that this, is, this should trigger the action of us making this coffee appear and then over time it's going to disappear and then when you move this closer this coffee is going to appear all right so let's go ahead and first create a trigger so i am going to go to my gizmos and let's go ahead and create a trigger this is my trigger zone i can make it a little bit bigger maybe something like this that's that's good if it sticks out a little bit above, that's fine. It's just going to make for an easier, more pleasant interaction. So even when your coffee cup is like somewhere in this close, this is already going to trigger the coffee to appear. Okay, so good so far. Now let's go ahead and, you know, before we do anything else, here is an important thing we want to, we want to do. We want to set the settings of this trigger so that the trigger reacts only to the coffee cup and nothing else. So if you accidentally touch it with your hands or if you touch it with some other objects in the world that's not going to fill up your cup with coffee, this should only react to the coffee pot. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's go into the trigger properties trigger properties make sure that the trigger is set to objects tagged and not player objects tagged so this trigger is going to be sensitive only to objects that are tagged with a tag let's just say coffee pot so anything that is tagged with the word coffee pot is going to trigger 
this trigger when it touches it. Now, Chrysan doesn't really know this is a coffee pot. We have to tell it. So let's go ahead and go into the attributes of this object and under gameplay tag, let's go ahead and type in coffee pot, just like this. All right, great. So now this object is tagged with the word coffee, co coffee pot. This trigger reacts only to objects that are tagged with copy, coffee pot. Uh, sounds good so far. Now let's go ahead and add a script. It is going to be a pretty simple script. So let's go to our gizmos script. Let's just go ahead and we can name it whatever we want. I am going to, whoa, that's really big. I am going to name this script refill because we are refilling our coffee over here. So refill, you can name it whatever you want. It really doesn't, doesn't matter. And this script uh, is going to be attached to our trigger. So how do we do this? Well, let's go back to the trigger properties again. Click here and where you see attached script, just click over here and choose refill. That's it. And now this script is attached to this trigger. Wonderful. Great. So now let's go back to the script. So click on the script. Let's go to the properties so we can see it here. We do need to create one variable here and the variable is going to be the coffee itself. So let's go ahead and on the right side where you see this pound symbol here, this hashtag symbol, click on new variable. Let's call it coffee. So this is going to be the liquid itself. And make sure that you set the type to object and click on confirm. And so now we have a coffee variable. Once you create a variable like this, let's go ahead and close this. You will see that the object that the script is attached to, so the trigger that the script is attached to, now when you go to the properties of it, you will see that the variable shows up here. So coffee, and right now is set to empty because we haven't really connected, we haven't told Horizon what in this world is coffee. So that's why we need to touch that coffee cylinder we created before. Let's go to the properties of that cylinder. And now let's go ahead and move this pill, the cylinder pill, to where it says empty here. And now we have it connected. So now our script understands that this is the coffee pot and this is coffee. We are getting closer. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to our script. Now the script is attached to the trigger. So just keep that in mind as you're writing the script. And the first thing we want to do in the script itself is when world is started, we want to make sure that before we do anything else in the world, when the world is started, that the coffee is actually invisible. So when world is started, we want to set set object visibility, just like this, to false. Now we don't want to set self visibility to false. We want to we want to set the coffee visibility to false. So let's go to our variables and drag the coffee pill over to set coffee visibility to false. And guess what? Take a look at our coffee cup. Our coffee is gone. Well, it appears to be gone. It's still there. It's just invisible. It's just set to invisible. But this is what the cup is going to look like when the game starts, when the world is started. Great. This is exactly what we wanted. Now, let's go over here to uh, our events and scroll down until you see when trigger is entered by object. So move this over here when trigger is entered by object, meaning when this trigger is entered by that coffee pot. What do we want to, to happen? Well, we want to set coffee and I'm just going to click on this first one and copy it. So copy 
I, I click move lower and then move your um, joystick to the right like this and then set coffee visibility to true so the moment this trigger is entered by that object the coffee visibility should be set to true and that looks like a really simple script and let's see if it works let's go ahead and see what happens if I take this coffee pot and I move it closer and here it is you see the coffee appeared just like that very simple it works it works this is exactly what we wanted to see now there are a couple other things that we have to do um, one thing that would, I would like to happen is after some time I would like this coffee to disappear again so let's say after five seconds you can make it as long as you want I want this coffee to disappear again so you have to refill it again so let's go to the refill script and I am going to create a new uh, event so when event is received I'm going to drag it over here and let's call this one uh, empty empty and the purpose of the empty event is to well, is to empty the cup from coffee and I'm going to move the set coffee visibility to false into the empty event just like this now nothing triggers the empty event just yet we are going to put the empty event on a timer so roughly after five seconds or so after you fill up the coffee the coffee is going to uh, just disappear and the reason why I'm using only five seconds is because it's easier for me to test if everything works right now you can of course make it much much longer than that but what we need to do is use the send event with delay so click on that and move it under when trigger is entered by right here so when the coffee pot touches the trigger we see the coffee appear but then after about five seconds we want to go to send empty we want this event to be triggered so let's see if that works we have our empty cup we have our coffee pot coffee appears two three four five and it disappeared so perfect this is exactly what we wanted after five seconds coffee disappears and then you have to refill it again and again two three four five and then disappears just like that of course you might want to set it for longer than five seconds we can set it for 15 20 90 seconds it's it's really up to you uh, whatever you want to do now there's something else that I, would, that I would like to do it would be nice to have maybe a sound effect some kind of like a splashing water splashing coffee splashing sound effect over here so let's look for an effect that maybe would work for us um, I am going to go to my sounds and just do a quick search for a splash sound I just have to spell it right splash let's see what do we have here okay these sound like big lake splashes it's not quite what I want I think this is better just the water splash one of the water splashes uh, I'm just going to grab the last one water splash 4 and let's go ahead and attach this one somewhere we are going to attach it in a second somewhere next to our coffee cup um, but in order for this sound effect to work we have to go back to our script and we'll have to create another variable and this is going to be the splash sound uh, you can call it whatever you want the name doesn't really matter the type does matter make sure that you set it to object and click on okay 
So now we have a splash sound variable. So when the trigger is entered by object, we want to play that sound. So we need to go to our actions and when you scroll down, you will find play sound. So let's move play sound somewhere over here and play sound on where we want to play this particular splash sound over here. Now this is just a variable, this is just a container right now. We haven't connected it to the actual sound yet. We're going to do it next. And to do that, you have to once again go to the properties of the trigger itself. You see splash sound right now is empty. But if I open the properties of my sound over here, water splash 4, I can connect it here. And just like that, we should be, we should be hearing the sound now when we fill up our coffee. Just like that. I heard it. Hope you heard it too. Hope my microphone picked it up. Here it is. Excellent. Wonderful. All right, great. Now, um, there are a couple other things we need to do. Uh, let's go ahead and group this entire object because right now all of these are separate elements. I want to group it, so I'm going to select everything and I am going to, you see over here, if I move my uh, thumbstick to the left, I'm going to group it, so now it becomes a group, just like this. And now when I go to the properties of the entire group, I can make this interactive and I can make this grabbable. Excellent. And not only I can make it grabbable, if I go to more, I can also use the grab anchor. Here it is, grab anchor, it makes this blue hand show up, so you can decide how you're going to grab it. So I guess it would make sense to grab it by the handle, kind of like this. This is something that you definitely want to be tweaking later on, but this is what we have right now. And we want to do exactly the same, the same thing to our coffee pot. So I'm going to go to the properties. Let's change it to interactive. Let's grabbable, perfect. And then go to more. Use grab anchor. There is this blue hand over here. You probably want to move it somewhere here where the handle is. It's going to make that interaction feel much more realistic. Looks good. And now, so far we have been testing everything in the editor mode. Now let's go into the player mode. All right, this is where we're going to appear. So let's go into the player mode. I just move my thumbstick up on the left side. And now, here it is. Here is my coffee cup. Here is my coffee pot. And uh, for some reason there is still coffee over here. And I know why, the reason why there is still coffee over here. Let me go back into the editor mode. And I am going to go over here and I am going to reload everything to kind of go to the beginning, restart the whole setting. Let's try again. Here it is. Here it is. Now let's see if it works. I see that I would have to co correct the grab anchor a little bit because it's not really comfortable for me to do it but let's see if it works here it is it was there and the sound effect was there everything everything worked let me just tweak it very quickly i had a realization now that actually if i it would be more comfortable for me to hold it hold my coffee pot like this and actually, it would be more comfortable for me to hold my coffee um, cup like this. And I also noticed that both of them should be a little bit bigger. So I can just resize the whole thing. Let's see how that works. Let's go into the player mode again. Here we are. Here it is. Oh, it has to go the other way. This is better, and like this. Let's see if the coffee is going to disappear. Here, it disappeared. Try again. 
great just like that i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in your feed keep in mind that you can get this and other interactive assets from the metacrafters asset store this can really speed up your building process just follow the link in the video description below